Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and special edition of This Week of Weather for this Christmas weekend. I'm your host and meteorologist at DT from Central Virginia here with Weather Risk, and uh, I, of course, as always, the captain of chaos, the colonel of confusion, your commander of catastrophe. Let's talk about this week of weather. For again, this is December 26th, it's on 27, early on going into a Saturday morning. Lots to talk about here, so let's get right to it. First, I want to mention our topics. We have, well, uh, three Arctic air mass outbreaks coming in over the next 10 days. So that's interesting. Um, I think the warm pattern is over. And of course, as many weather hobbyists, weather weenies, and others have noticed, of course, the warming never really got deep into the eastern U.S. at all. Uh, unless you're over the deep south or the Tennessee Valley. The Ohio Valley stayed cooler than forecasted. So did the uh, Mid-Atlantic, for that matter. And the warming never really got into New England or the Great Lakes, for that, for that matter, either. Also, the weak La Nina continues to hold. It is still in many weak La Nina, but the eastern Pacific is getting warmer, and we'll talk about that in a second. And uh, there's a possible significant eastern U.S. winter storm coming up January 6th or 7th. That's something interesting. Strong hints of a major pattern change here from January 7th to January 30th. Of course, that's a long way out, and we'll have to keep this in mind. Now, if the model data is correct and the new pattern holds, January 2026 could be historic for somebody in the eastern U.S. Of course, that's, those are two big caveats there. If the model data holds and if you know the, the, pat, if the new pattern develops, which it looks like it will, it has to continue past, let's say, mid-January. So we don't know that's going to happen, but if it does, certainly the potential is there for a great January coming up if you like winter cold and snow in the eastern U.S. As always, this here is the uh, Weather Risk Grains Twitter page. This here is the Blue Sky page for operational weather. Now we'll start off by taking a look briefly at what's going on here. This is the European model here. We have a snowstorm in the northern mid-Atlantic, New York State, um, New Jersey, New York City, uh, southern and eastern New England. And what's happened over the last uh, 24 hours is that it definitely has shifted to the north. We're getting more of the warm front moving into spreading the snow deeper into New England. Only uh, 24 hours ago, it looked like Boston was only going to see an inch of snow. Now they'll see maybe three or four. And uh, Connecticut, which is only going to see a couple of inches of snow, you know, five inches in western Connecticut, two inches in eastern Connecticut, same thing in Massachusetts, are now going to get blasted with a significant snowstorm of several inches. Uh, some places in western, far western Massachusetts, northwest Connecticut, the Hudson Valley could get 10 inches of snow. So this was the European model here in the upper left. Let me uh, call this up here one second. I'll show you what I mean in one second. This is the operational European model. Now, this is a warm front. A lot of people are like, how does this event, this kind of unusual uh, Long Island is going to get more snow while Pennsylvania and the mountains are going to change over to freezing rain and sleet, which they have. And the reason is this is a warm front. That's what this is. This here is the ridge. The trough is leaving. This impulse right here is driving a warm front. So that's what this is. This is warm front of rain. That's why behind it, the temperatures are much warmer. Um, and of course, uh, you get this bubble of warm air coming in, but the highs to the north. So the, the, what's happening is you're getting your frontal genetic forcing right here, and the snow's coming down very, very heavy. And the models show that very nicely. This was the NAM here from 18Z on this um, Friday afternoon. You can see that the heaviest snow had shifted north of New York City now. I don't know if they're going to end up getting six in New York City. Uh, that's why I lifted the, my snow area to the north, the heavy snow area. But you can see the tremendous snow here in the Hudson Valley, the Catskills, uh, Binghamton getting pretty clocking, and then also you can see Western Massachusetts and Connecticut. That was the NAM, and this was uh, the HRR showing the same sort of thing. Even bigger snow amounts here with the, um, with the you can see the uh, uh, one foot snow amounts here in the Catskills and some of those places here. Uh, and uh, over towards really getting Binghamton getting blasted. So pretty, but you can see the very strong model agreement in terms of the snow areas here. I think the HRR is probably too wet, it usually is. Um, but, and then this was the radar simulation, which worked out very nicely from the midday uh, 18Z, uh, 18Z um, a NAM. Actually, I think I have these backwards. Let me put this back like that. There you go. And uh, you can see that the heavy snow was really coming in. The model handled it really well. And they're getting blasted. This is as of eight, nine o'clock tonight, and you can see it was really getting slammed here. And again, it's changed over 
uh, in uh, freezing rain, sleet in Philly and interior eastern Pennsylvania. Uh, but this is really, really heavy snow here. So, and this was the last call map. I, uh, I originally had the six inch line in New York City, but I lifted it to the north, as you can see. All right, so that event's over and gone. Let's get on to the next thing here. Let's talk about the sea surface temperatures in January, excuse me, December 25. There's the La Nina right here. I want you to take a look at the Eastern Pacific and compare that to what it was a month ago. Remember how everyone was talking about how the Eastern Pacific was cooling a month ago? This is November 25, exactly one month apart. Look how much cooler the Eastern Pacific was. And look how much stronger the La Nina was. See that? Now change, compare that to this. And like I said, the Eastern Pacific has gotten much warmer. Now, right in the Gulf of Mexico right here hasn't warmed up, but everybody else, the Eastern Pacific is much, much warmer than it was a month ago. If you take a look at the actual data from the latest uh, Australians and from the uh, OISST, uh, this is over some care of the cyclonic weather, Alex Boardman, you can see that the range, again, remains somewhere around uh, that's tra the, the spread here. This is uh, minus 0 0.5. This is uh, 0 0.8. So there we are at minus 0 0.7. And this here is the Australians. And this, again, they, have, they measure it a little differently. But as of December 21, they had minus 0 0.9. It's a weak La Nina. Okay. In terms of the MJO, nothing's going on. The uh, European and the GFS, as long as La, La, La Nina holds, they're keeping the MJO stuck in the neutral circle where it's not doing anything. And that's what it does for the next mid to January 25. If we take a look at our teleconnections, okay, let's see what's going on here. Get an idea how the pattern is going to develop. We have our two Pacific teleconnections. The EPO has a negative and a positive phase. The negative phase is the ridge in Alaska, which brings over the severely cold air from Siberia. The positive phase brings mild air into Canada and destroys the cold air supply. And then the PNA, Pacific North American, that's the West Coast Ridge or West Coast Trough. And then on the Atlantic side, we have two of the Arctic Oscillation. The polar vortex is strong or weak, negative or positive. And the NAO, when it's negative, you have the Greenland block. And when it's positive, uh, you have a pattern which favors more the Midwest than Eastern United States. All right, so if you look at our Pacific side, you can see here um, uh, the EPO is very steady. As you can see, the black line shows it's dropped negative, then it's back to neutral again. And for the most part, it stays kind of neutral. Then most of the models have a dropping in January into negative values. Uh, the PNA pattern, we've been negative, goes to close to neutral, and then it drops off again here. And then the models split. Some of the models here um, have it going positive, and then the GFS, of course, has a negative because that model's a piece of garbage. Um, and you'll see why. The Arctic Oscillation here um, on the Atlantic side, positive, then goes negative, and the models are really split here. And the RA and the AO and the NAO, it's negative and it stays generally negative right on through, but very close to neutral. So none of these are ideal. Um, and these are all in a state of flux here because some of these are really different readings. So we'll see how it plays out. Maybe next week we'll have a better idea. All right, so this here is the current pattern. And again, this is the same map as um, um, this one, I just on a hemispheric level. So that's the US projection and this is the current one here so you can see the monster trough in the eastern pacific now this trough has been here for a couple of weeks and that's one of the reasons why the cold pattern we had and the couple of moderate snowstorms in the mid-atlantic southern mid-atlantic that was that was in the first half of december that wasn't there um but once the trough was moved in here it's dominated the pacific western canada and the west coast and as a result you're getting these atmospheric river events let me blow this up a little bit so you can see what I'm talk, talking about here. You can see these atmospheric river events coming out of this trough and just slamming into southern and central and northern California, like Oregon and Washington, into the, into the mountains of the Cascades and the Sierras, just getting blasted, just blasted with rain and, and heavy, heavy mountain snows. Now, um, to the east, of course, you have this ridge. Once this warm front is through, we do get a bit of a mild pattern coming this weekend. Uh, high over to the north of Quebec, northern New England. I will keep the New England on the seasonal side, but behind this front, there is some warm air for a couple of days before the next front hits. And some of this mild air will get up into Pennsylvania, um, but not much further. Okay, so here we have December uh, 28th, Sunday. 
So we have our next big trough coming in. Now notice what's different here. Now we're getting a ridge on the west coast. You see the difference? Okay, you see the trough? No, 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 no. This, this ridge here moves in and we start getting a, 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 into the western Canada. Look at that. Now that drops the big trough here into the Plain States and Midwest. We get a very strong cold front, warm air surging ahead of the front on Sunday and Monday before the front hits. And this is a Sunday, uh, December 28th. You can see where the front is right here. And there's the low in the Great Lakes. Now look what happened to this monster. Also notice the block in Greenland. You see how big this block is becoming? This is a really, really big issue. Blow up here a little bit right here. And again, if this if this trough here was, let's say, in the middle of the Appalachians, we could get a snowstorm out of this. You could see the, the strong block here, the 50-50 low in southeast Canada, this trough hitting the east coast just the right way. But it's not. It's a Midwest storm. But the pattern is changing. That's my point here. So now here's, here, here it comes. Now this thing really bombs out. 972 millibars on uh, Monday, December uh, 29. And look at these howling winds. Let me just blow up the surface on if you can see this. Look at these winds. Oh my God. 50, 60 mile an hour wind gusts or more in the Great Lakes. And then even when the front hits, wham, it hits on 20. It, temperatures are going to collapse during the day on December 29th on the East Coast once the front passes through. And you can see what happens. Again, if this was trough was not here, but on the East Coast, you would have a major East Coast snowstorm. It doesn't. A big ridge in the Rockies, the West Coast, that's nice. Huge block here, 50-50 low. The trough is in the right position, but it's not. I came out of the Midwest. This is a Midwest system, and but, but the Arctic outbreak is coming, and it's very, very impressive. And, of course, the gradient here between this intense low and the Arctic high is just massive. Show you what the winds look like. Hurricane force winds in the Great Lakes on the open waters. You see that? Almost hurricane force. And then the ridges, the mountains, the Appalachians, 40, 50 mile hour winds. So high winds coming. You can't, you know, watch that if you're in those areas. All right. Next, this is December 21. And um, let me see what's going on here with this. There we go. Uh, so this is uh, December 20, December 31, excuse me. So this is New Year's Eve. Now we have the block. Let me I'll blow this one up, bring this front here a little bit so you can see it in a little more detail. Okay. Bring this forward. There we go. So this here is your block. There's your monster block in Greenland. You remember it started out here and now it's coming in this way. See how it's retrograded to the west? And as a result, the polar vortex, this is the Midwest storm, okay, that moved up the Midwest storm. See this trough here? It moves up in eastern Canada and then the block stops it. So the thing gets trapped right here. And that's exactly what happens here. Okay, the polar vortex is now trapped. A new polar vortex is formed in eastern Canada. Look at the Arctic air coming out of northern Canada just Brutal, just brutal stuff. Ridge on the west coast, monster block in Greenland and northeast Canada and Baffin Island. And you can see the surface maps. All right. This is December. Let me blow, bring it back a little bit. This is uh, December 31. Here's the wind coming southward. And then just when it begins to ease up because of this huge system here, it sends another cold front through. And you get another Arctic front on, um, this is going to be on uh, January 1st. There's another Arctic front coming through and in the afternoon evening hours. More Arctic cold. Just wave after wave of cold fronts coming southward. This is now January 1st into January 2nd. The polar vortex is stuck, trapped there, monster block, keeping this in place. And if you had a big, really amplified ridge on the west coast of Canada, you would have a severely cold Arctic outbreak. <clears throat> Even so, this is some impressively cold air in the Great Lakes in New England. And the high drops southward, the new Arctic front comes in, all right? It's just a cold, cold pattern to go to the beginning of the new year. There's no doubt about that. Okay, so now this is January 3rd. Now, this is when things begin to change a little bit. Okay, there's our upper low or polar vortex. Here's the huge block starting from Greenland all the way into north central Canada. Very strong west NAO. Now, there's your trough on the west coast, all right? Now, this trough is going to split apart. And we'll see that happening. The front comes through south. This is the new Arctic front, January 3rd, pushing all the way down into Georgia and the Carolinas and Arkansas, Mississippi. Another Arctic high. Look at this baby coming southward. Monster Arctic high. Another Arctic outbreak. Strong north winds. Very impressive. So on January 5, this trough on the west coast begins to fracture. 
and the piece of it wants to move east underneath the, the, the ridging. So it begins to move into the lower plains, and you get this low pressure here over the lower plains, and high pressure, Arctic high, over Wisconsin and the Great Lakes. Now this high is going to be blocked by this upper low in eastern Canada. So as a result, this system is going to become a winter storm as it progresses eastward. And then I'll show you what I mean. This is January 6th. Bada boom, bada bing. The trough on the, that was on the west coast is now in the midwest of the Plain States. You have one block in eastern Canada here, upper low in southeast Canada, keeping the high pressure locked in place, and you have strong Arctic cold air damming up and down the east coast. According to this model, now this is 10, 11 days out. I realize that, okay? So we're not, I'm just showing you the possibilities here. And the other thing is, again, remember, the big trough on the west coast, eastern Pacific, that's gone. That's gone. And that's how you end up getting that pattern, okay? Now, is it certain? No, it's not certain at all. If the trough on the west coast or the eastern Pacific remains in place, then this is just nonsense, and it never will happen. But... Yeah, and this is, you can see what it progresses January 7th, the trough moves in the Midwest, and you got a nice storm here on the East Coast. This is a very stormy looking map, the upper map, very stormy. Now the GFS is totally different. Now why is the GFS so different? Because the GFS keeps this gargantuan upper low on the West Coast of North America. Here we have a ridge. There you've got an upper low here. And of course, when you have a monster trough this big, you got a ridge over the Eastern United States, and you're warm. I mean, it's not super warm because you have a block over here. But it's not a, a stormy pattern at all. Not at all. So if this is bullshit. The GFS is completely wrong. And you can see that because you look at the GFS ensembles. Let me show you what I mean. This is the European ensemble. Okay. January 6th. This was the operational run right here. Okay. This is the operational run. This here's the ensemble. And you can see monster block here. A strong trough over the Appalachians of the Ohio Valley. Classic East Coast, strong signal, position for the trough right here, okay? And then, uh, you can, again, you can see, um, uh, this is, again, way out there, day 10. The European model is just gangbusters. It's just gangbusters. And you can see how awesome it looks at this point. I mean, let me shrink the GFS here a little bit. And you, so you go, you, can, you see the block of Greenland. You see a giant 50-50 low. You see the monster trough here. The jet stream is split. Northern jet stream, you see the northern jet stream, there's the southern jet stream. Look at the energy in the southern jet stream. There's short waves and short waves and short waves and short waves. Look at the Arctic flow coming out of northern Canada and Siberia. I mean, this is just gangbusters, if this is right. The GFS, totally different solution. Totally different solution. And this is the European now for January 9th. You can see the pattern holds. Now, if we compare the extended beyond this, here's the CFS. And the GFS extended January 14th. Now, CFS here um, has, again, that trough on the West Coast. So we got a ridge over the eastern United States. Now, this is not a terrible pattern, but it's not an Arctic pattern. And it's more like mixed precipitation in the eastern United States. It's not a great pattern. The GFS ensemble does show blocking, Greenland blocking, a strong ridge in, in, in the Arctic region here. A nice trough in the Midwest, a nice supply of Arctic air coming southward. This is a pretty cold looking map that has potential on the GFS. And then finally, my last image here, this is the European weeklies. This is for January 22nd, January 16th. Let me change these so you can see them a little more. I got them in the wrong order. Okay, this here is January 16th, ridge, trough, positive anomaly here, direct Arctic flow coming southward. This is January 22nd, the same thing it holds. The pattern doesn't change. So if these are correct, it looks got a lot of promise, but we don't know. We're just I think it's going to be correct, but we don't know that. Okay, we all, all we know at this point is that the pattern, the pattern is shaping up. Which one, whether it's going to be Midwest, Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic, East Coast, Tennessee Valley, nobody knows. But the potential, it looks like we're headed for a pattern shift. That's the important point. All right, this is meteorologist DT from Weather Risk. Uh, Merry Christmas, everybody, and have a great New Year's. So we'll be on again next week, uh, probably before the New Year. A holiday and we'll see how things are going.